My name is Kevin Shakespeare. I'm Professor of Tissue Engineering here at the University of Nottingham. Um, my research is in the long term hoping to develop new medicines called regenerative medicines which are looking to help patients who have lost part of the body or have had part of the body injured. So let's say someone's had a heart attack and part of their heart isn't working. We'd like to be able to create new medicines that could restore the function of the heart. And the way in which we're trying to do that is to work at the interface between stem cell biology, so a very biological area, and using materials and engineering uh, to get those cells to do what we want. Marion Ellis is my rising star. She's from Bath University. As an engineer, she's interested in how we can develop repeatable and reliable processes uh, for getting cells and materials to combine. Do you want to say a little bit about how we, how we do this? Yeah. What we'd like to be able to do is print a material which would give you the structure, say of a, a nasal structure, but also print living cells at the same time. And so that, that requires us to create an ink for the printer that is a combination of a biological, so a cell, and a, and a material. And Marianne has got expertise in, in how you can work with those two together. She's got some things called bioreactors that allow you to combine them and recreate what would be a living ink that we could use in the 3D printer, hopefully for clinical applications. So whereas um, Kevin and his team might develop a new technology for cell delivery or drug delivery, or both, um, we can help them make that on a large enough scale in a way that's cost effective um, and repeatable and robust so that when it goes into the clinic, everybody can benefit from it and not just a small number of people. The, the potential for this is just huge, whether it be in fashion or in medicine. Or in so we've been paired with Jeremy Farrer, who's director of the, the Wellcome Trust, one of the major funders of, of biomedical research in the world. Um, and that's great for us because it allows us to have a mentor who's got experience of how uh, biological research and physical research uh, can translate into the clinic. So getting advice from him and talking to him has been invaluable. If you take our three backgrounds, you know, from uh, pharmacy but also polymers and how you use plastics and drugs and chemical engineering and my own background in neurology and clinical aspects, you're bringing together three people who wouldn't normally work together. Uh, different perspectives, different backgrounds, different ideas and, and inevitably that sparks off new ideas that none of us would have thought about on our own. To see a young chemical engineer who's, who's you know, clearly one of the great rising stars of the future being supported, mentored by Kevin, I contribute a little bit to, and seeing the way that people are thinking about this anew in a really imaginative way, the idea that you'll be able to restore function rather than just stop symptoms. Uh, that, that wouldn't have been thought of 20, 30 years ago and that's very exciting. For decades the research councils have funded work into the fundamentals of how cells form tissues and people like the EPSRC have funded how we can create new materials. So we've got an opportunity to be one of the world leaders in this whole area of regenerative medicine. And we're starting to see some new businesses being formed in that area. In fact, both myself and Marianne separately have formed businesses that have spun out of the university and are at the early stages of creating jobs and creating new technologies. So it's going to be a difficult road, but I think we have an opportunity as a country um, to see this as being a major growth area for the future.